So firstly, uh, demonstrating your love and passion for that specific university. So um, a, an example way to sort of think about this. So I have always aspired to study medicine at and, and whatever uh, this university is. Um, when we say always, we mean when you decided uh, to, to study medicine. Obviously not since the age of five, I wanted to, to study medicine at, at Exeter, um, which may be the case, but again, it sort of falls into that bracket of um, uh, being uh, an unlikely answer and something they don't necessarily want to hear. Um, if this is a university that you genuinely have wanted to study at for a while, and that normally um, comes under uh, sort of things like Oxbridge and some of the London universities, but it may be other universities as well, then it's perfectly fine to say that. Um, and actually my top tip for this sort of question is to make it honest. Um, there will be a reason why you put a, a university down and normally some um, these reasons will be um, something that you can discuss. Obviously, if it's something like um, I needed a, a fourth choice and, and this was the best out of the three, um, that's not really a, a good reason to be talking about. But think about why you specifically chose that university. And um, if you are stuck, do some research and look at um, some parts of the the course or uh, the actual university itself that um, uh, interests you and then you can talk about this. So uh, you can give several reasons here and make sure you back it up with an example and some, some concrete evidence um, where you see yourself in the future. So um, the, the most common one is sort of 10 years time, it could be 5, it could be 20, uh, it could just be a, a question of what are your future aspirations in medicine. So generally thinking about your, your future career and your uh, ambition. But the first reason for asking this is they want to see if you know the actual uh, training process for um, uh, medicine and therefore let's say for example if you're applying for a uh, five-year course and then they say to you where do you see yourself in six years time um, your answer should be um, either uh, so, sort of somewhere out of medicine or still on the course if you plan on taking a year out and, and that sort of thing or for the vast majority of you it will be uh, in your first year of foundation because you'll do five years on your medical course and then a year in foundation so y you need to sort of know um, what the, the rough timeline is so let's take a look at that so you'll have your, your medical school years uh, which will be sort of five or six years um, if you're a, a graduate I think some of them are, are sort of four um, but, but generally it will be five or six years. We're going to talk about Oxbridge interview questions, which I know is uh, a massive um, a source of worry and stress for students every single year, because every year the same articles and topics are sort of brought up and uh, people talk about how uh, strange and how sort of uh, unrelated to, to anything um, the questions are and all of these weird and wacky sort of stories. Um, and there's no real way to uh, validate these and, and see whether there's any truth in them. So I can only tell you uh, what I know from seeing the process from the other side and also what I've personally experienced. So the trick to doing well, um, and I put the, the top one in, in capitals uh, because I, I really want this to be what you take away from this. Um, there is definitely a, uh, uh, a large sort of um, trail of misinformation out there about Oxbridge interviews being really unfair on students and students feeling like they weren't really given a chance. Um, you have to remember that essentially what they're trying to do is probe how you think and that's quite a difficult thing to do if they're going to ask you questions you can easily prepare for because they don't know whether your, your sort of thinking style is uh, in line with what they want or whether you've just prepared really well um, and, and you know what the questions are. And so they need to throw in something that you're not going to be able to predict and see how you do. And that's the, the, the best measure of it. Um, so you need to be reasonably intelligent and be able to think on your feet. So uh, what we mean by reasonably intelligent is there is a sort of level of academic um, achievement you do need to get to. Because when it comes to um, the, the volume of work and the difficulty of the concepts, you do need to be able to, to understand it and take it in. Um, this isn't, you don't sort of need to be a, a super genius, I'm, I'm certainly not, um, but you definitely do need to have a, a sort of reasonable understanding of um, human biology and, and scientific principles and, and chemistry and, and maths and, and these sorts of things.